and then God makes us very special people. Now here I show you the ABC theory. When people have positive thinking, then they have positive emotions. When people have negative thinking, then they have negative emotions. So this here, God makes us very special people. First Peter 2 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So God made us his chosen generation, his chosen people, a royal priesthood that we are all priests to bring people to God and bring God to people. A holy nation, that a nation to follow the holiness of God and his own special people. We are special <coughs> in God's sight that we may proclaim <coughs> 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 Then we may proclaim the praises of Him, that we can proclaim that God is worthy to be praised, that He is wonderful, who call you out of darkness into His marvelous light. So He call us out from darkness into His marvelous light. So we are, God has chosen us so that we are special people. So when people have low self-image and then they believe God makes us special, then we can have healthy self-image. So when we think, oh, I'm no use, I cannot do anything good, but we believe in the Bible, that the Bible says that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. So I'm special, even though people don't think that I'm special. Even though sometimes I don't think I'm special, I want to change that thinking. I want to believe that I am special in God's sight. And then, when people have low self-image and then they continue to feel bad about themselves, they say, I'm no use, I'm no good, uh, I cannot do anything good, then they will have an unhealthy self-image. So I hope we all build up a healthy self-image. Only when we have healthy self-image, healthy thinking, healthy emotions, that our life can go higher and higher. So in the training of ministry, when I try to train people to do ministry, it's very important that we trust in God's love so that we have positive thinking and positive emotions and positive self-image, then we can do great things for God. If people have negative thinking, they always say there's no hope or uh, uh, it's no use and people are not listening to us, uh, it's no use to do all these things, then they have negative thinking and then they will feel very unhappy and then they will have low self-image and thinking that they are a failure. This way, they will go downhill more and more. But if we have positive thinking, then we'll feel uh, happy and joyful and have hope all the time. So I hope that we all <coughs> have positive thinking. The A, B, C. The A is the activating event. B is the belief. And then C is the consequence. So when we have positive thinking, then we'll have positive emotions. And when people have negative thinking, they'll have negative emotions. Okay, so this... ABC theory of emotion that and when there are negative event and they have rational belief that uh, that positive beliefs uh, reasonable beliefs then they have uh, healthy uh, emotions okay healthy emotions and then when there is a negative event and then people have irrational belief that that uh, is unreasonable belief it's uh, it's negative you believe then they have negative uh, unhealthy negative emotions okay and then there is a ABC theory of, of emotional change so the ABC the belief will produce the emotions and then if the emotions is negative the belief is negative then we want to change it and the D is disputing intervention so we want to intervene our beliefs change our belief change it and then E is the effect an effective philosophy is developed. So an a effective philosophy, believe that God loves me, I'm important. Uh, even when I have done something wrong, it's okay. I can ask for forgiveness and I can change. I can do it better next time. So that's a positive philosophy of ourselves. And then we have new feelings. So this is a uh, changing the ABC is when we have negative belief, then we want to change it to positive belief, uh, and then 
we can have positive feelings. Okay, and then it's very important to realize that the relationship with God Himself will bring joy and peace. Now, but there are different people who different ways people pray. Some people pray like this. They say, Oh God, you are not helping me. I mean desperate situation is too difficult for me. Then it's complaining to God and it's not, not going to help. But when we declare the goodness of God, God is helping me, God is blessing me, then we have positive beliefs in the Bible. The Bible is full of positive beliefs. Now some people say, well the Bible does talk about that, if, you know, that when we continue to sin, God is not going to hear our prayers. Now that's true. If we continue to sin, so we repent, repent, and then God is very happy. So always use the positive uh, belief from the Bible to overcome the consequence of sin declared by the Bible. The Bible does declare the consequences of sin, that you know we sow to the flesh will reap destruction. That the Bible does talk about that. And some people say, well, I always have negative thinking, therefore I will reap destruction. That you know. Even though this Bible verse talks about when we sow to our flesh, we'll reap destruction, it doesn't mean we have to follow our flesh. We can follow the Holy Spirit so we can change and believe in the positive uh, po uh, Bible verses in the Bible. Now, all the Bible verses are positive, but there are warnings in the Bible. There are warnings in the Bible to tell us if we continue to sin and don't pray to God, then we're not blessed by God. Now these are warnings. These warnings are for people you know, who continue to sin and don't turn to God. And then, the, uh, then what we do is repent and turn to God and God is very happy. But some people always hold on to the negative part and say, well, I, I continue to sin so God doesn't like me. I've known people like this. They always tell me, Bible verses that condemns the sin as said, then you repent and God is very happy. So we want to uh, believe in uh, all the promises of the Bible and if we have sinned, just repent and God is very happy. Now there are Bible verses that talk about when people, you know, continue to sin, they set the heart on sins, then that God will not hear the prayer. But if we say, I have sinned but I'm very sorry for my sin, then we are not setting our heart on sins. Then we are setting our heart on the forgiveness of God. And then God will forgive us. So don't say that I have to sin. We don't have to continue sin. Psalm 16 verses 8 to 9. I have set the Lord always before me because He is at my right hand and I, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. So the, uh, David said that he has always set the Lord before me. He has always has a good relationship with God. And because he said, my right hand, I will not be moved or I will not be shaken. I will not be affected by people. Therefore, my heart is glad. My heart is full of joy and my glory rejoices. My spirit rejoices. My flesh will also rest in hope. So my body also will rest in hope. My whole person will rest in hope. I will rejoice in God and my body will feel comfort. Now when we pray and enjoy God, we'll feel comfort. We'll feel comfort to the body. That's, uh, that, that is brought by the Holy Spirit, that He can bring us, give us joy to the Spirit and also comfort to the body. So it's very important to we, that we build up this relationship with God, that we need to realize that it's not the relationship, our relationship with God one year ago, or one week ago, or one day ago. It's my relationship with God right now. When I trust in God now, when I love God now, I have the strength from God right now. And God can bring inner healing. So when we have burdens, we have hurt feelings, they, we need healing. So when we pray to God, He will bring healing. Isaiah 61 verses 1 to three, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Verse two, to comfort all who mourn, and three, the oil of joy for mourning. So the Holy Spirit 
is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news. So we pre preach the good news. And then He has also sent me not just to preach the good news, to also heal the brokenhearted. So the Holy Spirit can heal the brokenhearted. That's a wonderful work of the Holy Spirit. The more we come to God, the more the Holy Spirit will heals our soul, heals our, our, uh, all our hearts in, from the past and proclaim liberty to the captives. So when we are captured by sins or bad habits or negative thinking, He can set us free. And the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Some people are bound by their sins, by their negative thinking, by uh, sinful behavior. I have, uh, you know, seen in the uh, internet that has talked about that different Christians and even pastors have been affected by pornography, sexual sins, adultery, and then they end up losing the ministry or end up doing terrible things to their family. They have divorced or even hit the uh, spouse or even kill the wife, their wives. That this is something that has actually happened because they don't let the heart be comforted. They let the heart of sin continue to grow. So as Christians, it's very important for us to manage our thinking, to believe that all sins are terrible, all sins are destructive. So don't let any sin affect us. Now some people have the habit of watching pornography, the sexual videos or pictures on the internet. The internet has it, make it very convenient for people to watch pornog pornography on the internet. But this is very destructive. It would destroy our lives. So we want to say, God loves me, God has a wonderful plan in my life, and if I continue to sin, it will destroy my life, and I will give the devil a foothold. And then we will lose the joy of the Lord, and we lose the presence of God, and we lose the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So we want to say no to those sins. And then God can build up our marriage, our relationship with people, and our ministry. So the more we follow God, the more we're blessed by God. So I hope we all will handle our secret sins. All the secret sins in our lives we want to handle so that we are not affected and destroyed by this secret sins or negative thinking or negative emotions. All these inside us need to be healed, need to be set free. That sins will bind us, will capture us. But when we have the forgiveness of God and the Holy Spirit, we'll have more and more joy and comfort. So we have comfort and opening of the prison and comfort. And we can come with confidence to God to get help. So whenever we have negative thinking, emotions, we can come to God. Now sometimes we say, it's too difficult to overcome this negative thinking. Then we need to come to God for, for wisdom, uh, for new way of thinking. Hebrews 4.16 Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in help to help in time of need. So we come boldly, confidently. We say, God will always forgive me. God will always accept me. To the throne of grace. The throne of God is the throne of grace. In God there is always grace and forgiveness. Then we can obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. When we have need, we can always come to God for help. And He will help us and take away our problems and our negative thinking and ne negative emotions. And we need to clear all garbage from our hearts. Many people have garbage in the heart. All the complaint of people, all the negative thinking, things are terrible, how people hurt us, how things are difficult, that very often we keep all this garbage in us. We want to keep the Word of God in us. We want to keep the Holy Spirit and the joy of the Lord in us instead of garbage. Garbage will only destroy us. Okay, and then the motivation to manage our thinking and emotions. Why, why do I have so much motivation? The reason is because I experience the Holy Spirit and then I see that I can do great things for God. So I here put down a few reasons. First, God loves us. He has planned to do great things in our lives. So first, God is a God of love. He loves me all the time, no matter how 
how uh, serious our sins are, He still loves us. No matter how difficult the situation is, He still loves us. Even when we have failed Him, He still loves us. But our sins and our failure can, you know, can affect our lives. So we don't want to sin. After experience of the Holy Spirit, I have a strong motivation not to let sin take away the grace of God. I want to stay in the grace of God all the time. And then number two, we are precious. So we should treasure our lives. We can become great people. So we are precious. And then number three, negative thinking, emotions, and sins destroy our lives. These are all negative. And number four, it is not worthy to be affected by negative people. It's not, not worthy to be ne affected by negative people or a difficult situation. And we'll regret of our negative thinking and emotions when we go to heaven. So we'll regret. But if we follow God, then our life will go higher and higher. So always thinking, God loves me, I'm precious. If I sin and have negative thinking, emotions, it will destroy me. If I have positive thinking, positive emotions and obey God and love God and serve God, there is always good consequence and my whole life will be blessed by God. Okay, but emotions are always faster than thinking. So like the, the rabbit and the tortoise, the rabbit is faster. The emotions are always faster. It will affect us uh, faster. So we need to keep managing our emotions. Now I have this experience many times. Someone said something negative to me and then I was affected. And then I manage it, my th manage my thinking. Okay, it doesn't matter if he is angry, was angry with me, with me uh, for no reason. I don't have to be affected by that. If I have done anything wrong, I apologize and I will change. But if I've done nothing wrong, I don't have to feel bad. But then when I s sleep in the middle of the night, when I woke up, I find that I feel pressure in my heart. So I know that I'm still affected emotionally. So I continue to say, you know, I do this many times a day. God loves me. God is happy with me when I come to Him. God is very happy so I can enjoy Him. Hallelujah! God is loving me. God is rejoicing over me when I come to Him. So I always encourage myself by declaring God's love and God's response to me when I come to Him. And then I find that the next night I did not have this pressure in my heart anymore. And then the more I do it, the more free I am. I want to share this. I grew up in a family of a lot of yelling. And when my stepmother came to my home after my father had a divorce with my mother, and uh, I started to have nightmares. And I also walked in my sleep. And uh, it affected me for years. And I kept rejoicing in the Lord, counting the blessings of God, and I found that I still have fear in my heart. Sometimes fear came to my heart for no reasons. Now different people have different emotions that come to them. Sometimes people have uh, sadness that come to them. Some people feel despair. Some people, uh, they cry without reason. So people have different responses. And then we want to manage it. We want to trust in God. God is helping me. I can be joyful. I can thank God. And then the more I do it, I say I can let go. And then when I do better, I applaud myself. Oh, today I'm, I'm doing better. Praise God. I'm doing better. I'm more joyful. I'm more peaceful. And then I feel more peace. And I feel I have more joy and strength. So I applaud myself. That way I manage and take away all the negative thinking in my heart. Now, of course, on earth here, we're not perfect. Only in heaven. Now, some people went to heaven and they said, the moment they, the, the soul leaves the body, they feel so free, so different from when they are on earth. So we, uh, when we go to heaven, then we have no worry, no negative thinking at all, no negative emotions at all. But we still have some, but we want to minimize it so that we have want to have as much joy as possible and, and as free as possible. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're so wonderful. You're so good. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. 
that way we have more and more peace and joy and uh, and then first we need to manage our emotions before we can help a problematic person Matthew 18 15 moreover if your brother sins against you go and tell him his fault between you and him alone if he hears you you have gained your brother but if he will not hear take with you one or two more that by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established so if someone has sinned against us, we, against us we want to talk with them but before we go to them we want to manage the negative emotions first so if that person has hurt me I cannot go to them with anger now this happened to many people they go to someone with anger and they want to hit the person they want to yell at that person it's not going to help we want to first manage our emotions I know that God will take care of the situation God can calm me down God can give me peace so we want to stay in the peace of God and take away all the burdens all the worries if we have any burdens of the ministry or family or of finance any kind of burdens in our heart we say God you will provide for me I just trust in you and do my responsibilities you will take care of everything for me so I'll just let go just let go even though the help doesn't come instantly still God will help us and then living in God's love brings a joyful life so uh, a joyful life so if we want to have joy all the days of, the, of our life Psalm 90 14 oh satisfy us early with your mercy that we may, may rejoice and be glad all our days so we need the love of God satisfy ourselves with your mercy then we can rejoice and be glad all the days of our life do you want to enjoy your life be filled with the joy of the Lord it's a choice even though when we have difficulties we can still choose to be joyful let me share with you I have lived in difficulties for many years I have been yelled at by people for a long time that I have experienced a lot of pressure from people but it's in this time of pressure from people that I learned to let go of unnecessary guilt unnecessary pressure when people pressure me I don't have to feel bad there are some people who always tell me negative things that now in the past I did not learn to you know how to manage help these people to manage their emotions and their thinking but for myself I manage it myself and then I I said even if they mistreat me I don't have to feel bad and I, so I gradually I learned to say no to all all this negative thinking and then I can stay in joy so I try to stay in joy in the joy of the Lord every day thank you Lord when I wake up I say God is help helping me God is blessing me God is happy with me hallelujah I can rejoice in the Lord hallelujah rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice 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 and again I say rejoice 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 and again I say rejoice so I I want to rejoice in the Lord and God wants us to rejoice in the Lord all the time okay so here uh, 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 we'll finish here this section how to manage our negative thinking and emotions and uh, there are a few key points that uh, we can uh, use the five step of victory five step of victory first is aware aware that negative thinking and emotions will affect us it's destructive uh, that what does the Bible say and then pray for forgiveness and strength and also number five I choose to have positive thinking and choose to praise God and count God's blessings so that I, have, can, I can have joy and then uh, and there are a few motivations first God loves me I'm precious and if I sin and have negative thinking it's destructive and then if I uh, have positive thinking and emotions then I I'll be more fruitful and uh, when I trust in God and obey God God is al always happy and even if I improve 1% a day I, I you know in 100 days I can improve 100% so I can thank God for any improvement I can applaud myself 
and I want to say it takes continual effort it doesn't the management of thinking and emotions doesn't come easily it took me year to learn not to be affected by negative thinking and emotions and uh, now it is it's the speed how we manage it you know uh, sometimes people are affected by the negative thinking and emotions for a long time for a long period of time I remember in the past I was affected by some negative thinking emotions I felt suppressed by people for years I felt very pressure in my heart and I and so I I learned to just trust in God and uh, I learned to sing songs in uh, uh, songs of uh, peaceful songs thank you Jesus hallelujah just sit down and relax and sing songs to the Lord and then I feel more and more peaceful and then I found that my negative emotions would go away
some people have deep habits of negative thinking emotions always say it's hopeless it's useless people don't like me people don't love God it's too difficult many people always think like that and they think God is not helping them many people uh, they in the belief they say <clears throat> I believe God is helping us but actually they think that God is not uh, you know God's help is too slow God is not really helping me all the time and God doesn't really have a wonderful plan now the wonderful plan of God is first is uh, presented in the Bible the Bible teaches us that God all the days of our life has been written in his book that is uh, written in Bible but also when we look at our lives when we uh, look at how God has worked in our lives we can see God's plan in our lives and then we can build up our faith when we count all the blessings in our lives but some people because they don't obey God they have a lot of difficulties in the family when they have fights and yelling and uh, the ministry is not fruitful because they're always under pressure it's always giving uh, pressure to people to motivate people to change instead of giving pressure to people we can motivate them with the grace of God God loves you God has a wonderful plan in your life and when you follow God and love God God will bless you more and more and your life will go higher and higher and God will remember you and bless you and and give you rewards and he will use you greatly so we always want to give people hope and joy and reason to be joyful in the Lord and give grace bring the grace of God to people but some people they're under pressure themselves and they give people pressure they give the spouse pressure they say you're not treating me well you're you're not uh, cooking well you're yelling at me uh, you don't listen to me you don't love me and sometimes they don't say it but in the heart they say uh, they say this other young girls treat me nicer than you now this is very serious because then we start then the people can start to trust in other girls so we want to say we want to count the blessings and then respond to our wife so that they will see that we care about them and then the wife also learns to respond to us with love and care and humility and and uh, submission and then we love them as Christ loves the church and then we build up the relationship and then there is positive thinking all the time in the family we want to always give people positive thinking it's always joyful and hopeful I always tell my wife I love you I care about you I'm happy to see you I'm happy I'm happy to be with you I'm happy to do anything for you I always tell her that and I always do those things and she's very confident with me she feel very com uh, she feel great comfort and she's confident uh, of me that she knows that I love her all the time so then I don't give the devil a foothold then I don't give the devil a foothold to attack me and then in my life is all positive I try to build up positive relationship with people I always treat people nicely I always nice to people that way then I have nice responses from people and then I can enjoy life more then I don't live in negative thinking and emotions but I've known people even you know Christians and even pastors they are negative they are unhappy they they complain they worry and then what happens is they lose strength okay so now is there any you send the questions to this leader group the leader group is how you communicate with me okay it's always the leaders group if you have questions you send it here and then I will respond to you so does anyone have questions okay if not we'll have uh, now you can respond to me should I continue for 10 minutes and then stop or should I stop now I can uh, I think there's no time to go any further uh, but I can explain more uh, apply it more for instance in some family um, the relationship has been bad already 
the husband and the wife yell at each other and then they dislike each other they uh, they always say negative words and then how can you build up positive thinking and positive emotions in a family like that or the children are disobedient so the whole family is full of negative emotions and negative words so how can we change it um, first we want to have hope in God we believe that God can heal a family even very problematic uh, family God can bring healing so first we believe in God and come to God for prayer for strength Lord you can heal our family now uh, it's very important for every person that our family life, our personal life, and our relationship with God and our ministry is all positive. So any area when it's negative, we want to first have faith in God. God can heal. And then we want to forgive our spouse and our children for what they do wrong. If they have uh, uh, done things wrong or they continue to do things wrong, we want to forgive them. And we want to repent of our sins of being negative and, and uh, emotional. We want to repent and ask God to forgive us so that we start to be nice to them. Even when they are not nice to us, we want to be nice to them. And then when people are emotional, sometimes it's best to just calm down. If they cannot manage it right away, maybe it's better to walk away at that moment and calm down and pray before they come together and then it's very important to accept each other and listen to each other if the spouse feel unhappy about certain things we listen to them we don't force them to change we listen to them and understand their needs and their problems we understand the problem and then we say uh, I, I know that uh, it's unhappy for you now I understand that uh, it's difficult for you now I, and then we um, and then we uh, listen to them and then we try to resolve the problem we talk gently we guide them guide them to find solutions we we want to say okay uh, we have not been having good communication let's try to talk positively uh, now, I have talked about words of grace and how to speak words of grace like uh, I love you, I care about you, you're important, uh, you're precious, you're, God loves you, God has a wonderful plan in your life. These are words of grace. And then we need to also say words of the law gently. We can say, uh, please help me with this work. Let us clean the house. Let us do this together. Let us have better communication. Can we have better communication using questions? Can we have better communication? How can we communicate better? So to overcome the problems, because when there are problems that are not solved, then the negative thinking and emotions will continue. So we want to be able to handle our negative, the, the problems, the problematic relationship. Uh, if it, there is any problem, we want to face it and listen to the other person and then talk about it and try to uh, overcome it together. Then we can start to choose to have positive thinking and positive emotions and positive words. It's very important to speak positive words. They always say, there's hope. There's always a way to resolve it. And um, for instance, right now my wife is facing some difficulty in her uh, job in the school not herself it's some difficulty in the school and then uh, I, I support her all the time I say God is with you I'm with you I'm ready to do anything for you if I can do anything to help you I'm happy to do that and I also let her know that uh, she, Jesus cares about her problems she's facing so when she's facing the problem she can say Lord you are helping me you have a plan to solve this problem please give me strength guide me how to de make decisions guide me how to resolve solve the problems how to overcome these problems so God is always there to help us so when we trust in God's help then we can have strength and peace and joy 
But many people, when they face difficulties, they worry and they complain and they are not happy. So I hope we all um, will think positively, and then we can speak positively, and then we can have feelings uh, in positive ways. Okay. So I hope uh, we all need to take care of problems in our life, of problems in the uh, marriage, in the family. In the ministry, in how we relate to people, we don't suppress people, we don't pressure people. We want to love them, care for them, show the love of God. You know, Jesus motivates his disciples to change not by pressure, not to pressure them to obey, but to tell them the grace of God and love them and care about them. Even when Peter was about to deny him three times. Jesus did not say, shame on you. It's terrible that you're going to deny me three times. But Jesus said, I pray for you that you will not lose your faith. And then when you are strength, when you are uh, restored, strengthen your brother. So Jesus always give hope to people. So I hope we all give hope to people, always speak positively. Then we develop a positive relationship and positive environment around us and in the church we always we want to be positive everyone to be thanking God and appreciating each other you're wonderful you're doing well uh, uh, you uh, I appreciate what you've done for God it's wonderful so whenever we see people are doing well we want to praise God for these people and want to appreciate them and motivate them and help them and be with them then we build up the relationship, a positive relationship. So I hope, you know, all this work together. If one area has problem, then it will create negative thinking and emotions. Any problem we need to resolve. Now, sometimes other people don't cooperate. We change ourselves. And then if they don't cooperate, we change ourselves and then we learn not to be affected by them. And, uh, so that we continue to be positive and then gradually we can change them and then if a co-worker continues sin without repentance then now first we want to uh, speak gently to them and guide them now, actually all the way we want to speak gently to them and guide them to repentance we uh, accept them and forgive them and pray for them but if people continue to persistently sin for instance uh, they chase after girls and they steal money and they don't repent then we have to take actions of discipline and if the person doesn't repent then he cannot be a uh, serving God anymore until they repent and really uh, show himself to be fruitful because people like that in a church can destroy the ministry and will bring negative effect to the ministry so if People are very negative all the time. They should not be ministers. They should not be serving God. They should be ministered to, to help them to think positively. So if the whole church, the people in the whole church are thinking positively, always hopeful in God, always trusting God and obey God and love people and care about people, then there will be a positive atmosphere. Then it's easier to have a positive, have positive thinking and emotions. But if there are different kinds of problems, for instance, the pastor doesn't listen to people, just do things his own way, and doesn't care for the people, and then people are selfish, and they fight against each other, that is very difficult to have positive thinking and emotions. So all this needs to be taken care of. We need to uh, take care of different problems. We have to untangle the problem and see where the source uh, of problem com comes from. So we have to have the positive thinking in God that he will resolve the problem, positive emotions to handle problems so that we can face this problem and overcome it with the help of God. Okay, so if you have problems, please write down the questions in the group, uh, the group of uh, leaders. <clears throat> so all the other pastors, if you have questions, you send it to the leaders, the leaders will send it to me here. Okay, and then in one hour's time, uh, so you have lunch and I'll have uh, dinner too. And then in one hour time, we'll come back again. Okay, so if your problem, 
uh, questions you can ask me. Okay, God bless you. I hope you can apply this. And uh, you can send to me. Actually, every time I start to speak, you can say, I can hear you, I can see you. So I hope you can send to me simple messages and say, I can see you, I can hear you clearly. Then, then I know that is, uh, uh, online is, is going, uh, doing well. Okay, God bless you. God be with you and t clear your past negative thinking and negative emotions. Lord, give us strength. God, give us peace in you. <clears throat> Give us your love and joy and wisdom to handle our negative thinking and emotions. Help us to relax in God, trust in God. Help us not to live in pressure. Help us to live in the love of God, to rejoice in the Lord, to enjoy God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. You're wonderful. God is wonderful. God is always helpful. God always cares about us god always help us to overcome a problem thank you lord please comfort your people give us strength and peace be with us in jesus name we pray 